372 of the Trump administration. President back at the White House tonight after his trip to Davos. He had a busier than usual week ahead. It includes formally unveiling his latest immigration proposal, delivering his first State of the Union address as president, and attending a retreat with House and Senate Republicans. All of it now against this backdrop of the latest big story the White House has been forced to react to. The New York Times exclusive last night that the president ordered the firing of Robert Mueller, but for his White House counsel who said, if he goes, I go, and so it was never carried out. While the Times broke the story, similar accounts and confirmations have followed from NBC News, The Washington Post, Fox News, among others. Today, the president had the opportunity to respond to these reports. Fake news, folks. Fake news. What's your message today? Typical New York Times fake stories. Did you try to fire Robert Mueller? Thank you. The president's lawyers are still negotiating the terms of any interview between the president and Mueller's team. But a new report out in The Wall Street Journal says, quote, President Trump's legal team has been studying a 1990s federal court ruling that could be the basis for delaying, limiting or avoiding an interview with special counsel Robert Mueller, according to people familiar with the matter. In that case, a federal appeals court ruled that presidents and their closest advisors enjoy protections against having to disclose information about their decision-making process or official actions. The court ruled that prosecutors hoping to overcome arguments of executive and presidential privilege must show that such information contains important evidence that isn't available elsewhere. Earlier tonight on this network, Harvard Law School constitutional law professor Lawrence Tribe laid out his predictions of what could happen if Trump were to refuse an interview. I think we are right on the verge of some kind of explosion. When Miller says, I want to interview you, and Trump, after getting advice from his lawyers, might say, well, I really don't feel comfortable with it, if that's what he says, he will be ordered to appear. He will be subpoenaed. If he defies that subpoena, he will be defying a court order, and that will lead to a constitutional explosion. Weekly Standard editor Bill Kristol gave his own theory as to why Trump's legal team may delay here as much as possible. Trump is scared of Bob Mueller. Trump will not <laughs> testify to Bob Mueller. And Trump wants this investigation to be stopped or slowed down or impeded right. or made more difficult or just discredited as much as possible. There is another high-profile witness slated to speak with the Mueller team, and that's Steve Bannon. A source familiar with the discussions is telling NBC News Trump's former chief strategist is expected to meet with Mueller's team by January 31st. That's Wednesday of next week. Bannon was widely quoted criticizing Trump and his family, as you may have heard in the book Fire and Fury, which led to a very public falling out with the White House. That's left a number of people wondering what exactly Bannon will tell the special prosecutor when that interview review does take place. So a lot to get to, a lot of questions. Let's bring in our leadoff panel for a Friday night. Matthew Nussbaum is here with us, White House reporter for Politico. Jennifer Rogers here with us as well, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, now the executive director for Columbia Law School's Center for the Advancement of Public Integrity. And we welcome to the broadcast former federal prosecutor Cynthia Oxney, a veteran of the Civil Rights Division at Justice, and she happens to be a veteran of this network as well. Uh, good evening to you all. Welcome to you all. Jennifer, first things first, how important was this story last night about Trump's order not carried out to fire Robert Mueller legally? I think it's potentially huge. I mean, we know that we need an action and we need intent to get the obstruction case. And there's lots of evidence, you know, implying that there was the intent when uh, Comey was fired. But this, to me, is a little bit of a clearer line between action and intent, because you have uh, Bob Mueller, who is a special prosecutor. All he's doing is the Russia investigation, right? You don't have these other excuses about the Hillary investigation and not running the bureau the right way. So if in June, not even a month after Mueller takes over, so he can't possibly be mishandling anything, Trump is ordering someone to fire him, it can only 
only be to stop the investigation. I mean, of course, we want to know more about the conversation between McGahn and Trump. Obviously, the reasons for the order would have been discussed between them. And that's still the big question here, what we don't know. But to me, unlike the Comey situation, it really, you know, it can't be anything else. So I think there's a pretty clean line of action to intent here. And that's why I think it's potentially enormous. And do you agree with Professor Tribe uh, and that scenario he laid out if the president tries to resist? I think so. You know, we're we're a bit in uncharted territory here. I mean, no one really has uh, refused before, but it's certainly important evidence. It's evidence that they can't get any other way. So I have to think that any court, if presented with a president refusing to respond to a subpoena, is going to order his appearance. Cynthia, welcome. It's great to see you again. You told one of our producers we should keep our eye on the ball. Define that for us. <laughs> Well, I think we're all focused on the obstruction because we're just learning uh, now about the attempt to fire Mueller and put together the obstruction. But remember, Mueller has known about this for weeks. The real question is not the obstruction, because at this point, it, it seems pretty clear that there was an attempt to obstruct the investigation. But why? Let's keep our eye on that. Why was Trump willing to go to these extreme lengths to 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 try to destroy and demolish the Russia investigation, because there's something he does not want Mueller to find out. That's what's really important that we need to know, and we don't know, and Mueller probably does. Um, Matthew, I'm going to take you back to your beat and repeat for the benefit of all of us, and we'll talk about it afterwards, the number of denials about attempts to fire Mueller. Does the president commit to not firing Robert Mueller? The president has not even discussed that. The, the president is not discussing firing Bob Mueller. But will he commit we not are to fire? Him. and cooperating with. He, he has not even discussed not fire. He's not discussed firing Bob Mueller. Is he going to rule out once and for all firing Robert Mueller? Look, I'll address the second question first. President uh, said last week, I believe it was last week, and I've said several times before, there's no intention or plan uh, to make any changes in regards to special counsel. Is he setting the stage no, for come firing on, Chuck, Bob Mueller? No, there's no, there's no there's conversation. There's no way. There's no, there's no way he's going to fire him. There's no conversation about that whatsoever in the White House. For the 1,000th time, we have no intentions of firing Bob Mueller. So, Matthew, as you heard, there was no intention of firing Bob Mueller. What was the White House saying today? Because as we've learned from our lawyer friends on this panel, this was a consequential story. Right. I think what's most spectacular has been their silence. After for so long saying, as Kellyanne Conway was shown saying there in August, there's been no discussion of firing Bob Mueller. Now we know Trump ordered just that back in June. Um, Look, we know these aren't the most credible people, but for something like this, uh, it really is explosive. And to go back and see all the times they they denied this, uh, there's been no official denial from the White House, aside from the president calling it fake news. Uh, in that New York Times article, something I thought was big was there was no Don McGahn in there saying, uh, oh, no, this never happened or, or, you know, declining to comment or anything like that. Um, I, I think for a White House whose credibility is already in tatters, this is just sort of a, another hit to that. Jennifer, I heard a lawyer on television tonight as the, the parlor game goes on. The New York Times says there were four sources on this story. But I heard a lawyer say this is probably not a lawyer because of res a professional responsibility. They did not think a leak like this could come from a lawyer. Well, it certainly wouldn't be a lawyer that had a, a attorney client relationship with Donald Trump. True. So Good point. that is not going to be, you know, and a lawyer like that's not. But other than that, I mean, it, it, there wouldn't be any professional responsibility for a lawyer not acting in the capacity uh, of a lawyer to, you know, uh, keep that uh, communication confidential. So I don't know why it wouldn't be, you know, someone who by profession is a lawyer. S uh, Cynthia, a dual question for you. Number one, um, uh, not brought up a lot. What about Mike Pence? And number two, if Trump woke up tomorrow morning wanting, above all, to fire Bob Mueller, doesn't it at this point have to be for cause? Well, what about Mike Pence, number one? My guess is he will be interviewed before the president's interviewed. Uh, and that um, I don't I, I don't see how he fires. I don't see how he could possibly fire Mueller at this point. I mean, even the um, the most weak need 
of the Republican leadership, I think, would actually balk at that. Maybe I'm just hopeful that they'll stand up for the rule of law. But I think they would, and I don't think it's possible. And yes, it would have to be for cause. And first, you would have to probably fire Rosenstein. So there would be quite, um, a, quite a series of events that would have to happen, and it seems impossible to me. And Jennifer, if you're Team Mueller, what is it, remind us, what is it you want to ask Steve Bannon? Well, I think they want to ask Steve Bannon a lot of things, right? I mean, he was right there in the president's ear, you know, at least according to Michael Wolf. Wolf's book, you have these kind of contrary forces working in the White House, but Bannon certainly was a very powerful person there, you know, talking to him and, and kind of guiding him. So you just want to talk to him about a variety of things, but certainly the Comey firing. I mean, I do think, regardless of the fact that, of course, ultimately Mueller wants to, to get behind the purpose of these firings and see what uh, the Russia collusion case is all about, I think he's really honing in on the obstruction because it's a potentially clean, easier case to make, and I think they want to kind of have that one in the bag just in case he's fired or in case you know something else happens so i think they're going to try to wrap that up first so i think they'll be talking to him about firing comey they'll certainly be talking to him about all of these other conversations around michael flynn that will be a very important topic of conversation for bannon so while they'll talk about the russian stuff to some extent i think they'll really be focusing in on those things that are more related to the obstruction side of the house matthew is it the prevailing view that since cobb uh, and dowd arrived um, it's a little bit tighter. There's a little bit more control, maybe not over all of the president's utterances. That's right. There's definitely been uh, a lot less in, in the way of witch hunt tweets and, and accusations against Mueller. We've seen less inside the White House of trying to dig up things about Mueller's prosecutors. They've sort of left that to Sean Hannity and his friends. Uh, but Donald Trump is not someone who's known for his patience. So you had Ty Cobb saying in August this would be over by Thanksgiving. And then he said it would be over by New Year's. Now he's saying it'll be over in the next few weeks. Um, the president hears this, and he's going to see that this investigation is not wrapping up. Uh, and how long he can let that go on and, and follow the Ty Cobb strategy, I think, remains to be seen, especially because we know his instinct is not to sit back and let this continue. His instinct is to fight it.